Good. Yeah. Okay. All right, Walter. So first, I'm just going to ask you the the easy questions. So, what is your full name? Walter Bernard Boninger. And when were you born? June 21st, 1928. And where were you born? Hamburg, Germany. So how old does that make you right now? I believe I'm 87. <laughs> <laughs> and what is your religious identity? Jewish. <laughs> How many siblings do you have? None. None? All right. Here comes story time. So, can you just tell us your personal story about the Holocaust, the war, whatever you like to refer to it as? Well, the... You know, the story that I used to tell, I'm not a Holocaust survivor because I wasn't in the camps, I wasn't in hiding, you know, all stuff like that. The only thing that happened to me is that my parents were killed when I was 11 years old in a Holocaust-related incident. And I've come to realize that I am a Holocaust survivor, that losing one's parents at that age and so traumatically is um, not a picnic. So, um, yeah, we were on our way, my parents and I were on our way to Ch Chile um, on a, a supposedly uh, neutral boat, but the Germans, of course, paid no attention to that. And um, my parents lost their lives, but I, I was rescued. And I don't know, sometimes I think that, because we were all together as we hit the water. And um, I um, sometimes think that they just played airplane with me. I don't know if that's uh, f physically or physics correct, you know, when you, when you do that. Uh, yeah. uh, that they lowered themselves. Nobody could swim, so they, they just lowered themselves. Um, and pushed me to the surface, and um, I was rescued. I think there were some um, uh, flotsam, some uh, logs or something maybe that I held on to, and um, I was um, pulled. Um, And I'm trying to remember, and I was I pulled. You know, I, oh, gee. Yeah. That's what happens. Um, I, I was, um, oh, why am I having a problem right now? Just uh, okay. recalling, you know, this event. Um, I know we ended up in in Harwich, and I also remember being uh, tea with milk. They uh, just pumped it into me so that I would throw up and uh, clean clean me out, so to speak. And um, I, I, do, I do remember that, and I remember a lot. Uh, it's it's funny what comes to mind at the moment, if I may just digress a little bit. Um, the following morning, uh, they were, well, we were already in a hotel. We went to a hotel in London, and um, in fact, I, I just, uh, read a letter that I wrote. It's a very, very interesting letter. 
and if you want it um, as a, you know some kind of documentation, it's a letter that I just wrote, um, maybe uh, a month or two at the most after this happened, and. Um, um, hmm. I'm not doing so well at the moment. Well, I remember, of course, this is uh, <laughs> uh, I think they were serving um, in this hotel, they were serving eggs and ham. And of course, I, I didn't know if what it was, but I didn't know what it was. You know, I guess I could eat it, and so I did eat it. And um, I'm, I'm lost at the moment. So can you, can you tell us what, what did the Germans do to the ship that you were on? They oh, it, it was uh, hit by mines. They they laid it was okay. a, it was a you know a Dutch uh, ship, the Simon Bolivar, and um, yeah, that's uh, they just laid mines and these neutral uh, shipping channels, mm -hmm. and they they won, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> What, what year was that? 1939. So you guys, you guys didn't see Crystal Knocked. Oh yeah, or that, you did. Uh, that was November. Uh, yeah, oh, I remember Crystal Knocked very well. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I just, I just said I remember it very well, and I can't remember the thing. Because um, my father was uh, in a concentration camp there for, I said it was two months, but it might have only been one month. And I do remember when he came home uh, from that, he had Instead of a belt, he had just a rope around uh, his yeah. pants to hold the pants up. And um, had an uncle there who um, was smart enough to hide or go somewhere where nobody knew where he was and he didn't get into the camps, but he was... But you know, he came out. Uh, not not everybody who was in Kristallnacht came out of the camps alive. So um, yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. Just keep asking the questions because that's why I keep on talking. Yeah, no, that's know. good. That's why after I get a little bit of the info, I keep going. So yeah, yeah. after Kristallnacht, you guys did someone sponsor you to go, or it was just you guys just happened to get the papers to go to Chile? I don't know whether sponsor, sponsorship was necessary at yeah. that time to get to Chile. I don't right. know if there was. I didn't know it. I know later on when we came to the States, uh, someone didn't sponsor us. Yeah. Okay. So, you right there, ship. Saying, so you were 11 when yeah. the ship yeah. sank. Yeah. And they must have pulled you out. Somebody was it a pass a ship passing by that found your ship that had gone down that they pulled. They were able to pull you out. I I think there was uh, some um, um, there had to have been like a mayday call or something. I, I think that's maybe what it was. Yeah. And, you know, and some yep. ships did come there. Okay. And. Uh, Pulled us out. Yeah. And then we went to England. We went to England. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's why we were 
rescued and it was a very dramatic because I did have an aunt and uncle who were my father's. In fact, my parents had just visited with them. Oh, wow. They were living in England at the time and um, So, um, yeah, I was able to, to, to stay in England. The, the story I'm told is that they, my aunt and uncle sneaked me into the American embassy. <laughs> I was small at the time, and um, I don't know if that's true or not, but that is what I've been told. And it may very well be true. Um, and I wasn't able to stay with them, so that's um, because they uh, they were um, themselves uh, were servants, or, or, yeah, and, and they, they just couldn't you know, house you and pay for so they they couldn't house me and. I think that's how I ended up in, in Margate, um, which is a nice small community right near the White Cliffs of Dover. And um, there they found for me a, a boarding school uh, that, I, um, that I attended. And um, well, I should bring that letter out and read it because that's uh, <laughs> that's as a wonderful document. Yeah. Uh, because at the time, my aunt and uncle, in um, in uh, England. England, were Reformed Jews. Mm -hmm. and my parent, my grandparents, and Belgium were Orthodox. Yeah. And they did not want me to stay. Um, and uh, they, they even hired an attorney. And I remember him as being a very frightening man with a big <laughs> swollen eye. And as the announcement was made, that the Queen of England, you know, had given me permission yeah. to stay. He stormed out of the room and said, For me, werden Sie wieder and from now you will be hearing again from me. Oh. You know? <laughs> and in this letter that I just got from, uh, that I wrote yeah. a few days later, one of the really remarkable um, uh, clarification is that even my grandparents were happy that I stayed uh, uh, that I stayed in England that yeah. they were not that upset over it my grandfather unfortunately was one of the six million and uh, his his my grandmother died um, before all that happened so anyway after, when you were in England, you said you ended up in Margate. Well, I spent the, I, I think I, I spent in those ten months I was in England, I think I spent in four different places because that's when the uh, bombing st started and uh, we were evacuated. Yeah. Um, to um, the Midlands, I think a town called Walsall, and um, and then at the end, I, my aunt and uncle were living uh, with somebody there, one of one of their relatives that lived there, yeah. and um, that um, so I was you know I was able to stay with them. They actually gave me a recorder, you know, I, mm -hmm. one, of, one of those, a Khalil. <laughs> um, and uh, it's a totally useless recorder because it's in the key 
of A, I believe, the most recorded are either in, in C or in D. If, if you're musicians, you probably know all this. Um, and, uh, but I still have it. It was a one, wonderful instrument that helped me to, to sight read. If I needed to learn a piece of music, yeah. uh, I would have that, and I still have it. Wow. Um, and, um, yeah, ask me a question because I'm losing, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ambling. <laughs> so, after England, you came to the U.S., and how, how old were you then when you got here? Well, it was September 1940 when I got here, so you figure it out. I got that. Um, and? And I came on a, on a boat also. Another boat? You got on another boat? I, I did, and uh, it, it was during the war, and it was very, oh my god, I, you know, <laughs> oh, we were terrible. I think I was with uh, three or four other boys. Oh boy. Yeah, <laughs> and, oh. I wish you had given me some notice so I could uh, <laughs> make better recollections on this. But well, if you I, if you want to give me the letter, what I can do is take it to work and make a copy of it, and then I'll bring it back to you so I can fill in. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. I don't think it will touch on this particularly, but. Um, so you guys were troublesome on the boat. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we told, oh, we woke one guy up in the middle of the night and told him, you know, what's the matter? He was having, he always told him he was having nightmares, you know, and, and stuff like that. I, oh, boy. Yeah, we, 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 we were bad. So yeah. then, but, uh, who did you we, stay we with did, when you got here? Well, how much time do you have? I mean, you have a lot of, <laughs> lot of time because... You know, they're all stories, and, yeah. and um, the couple who had given us the um, affidavits to yes, stay here yeah. uh, was a sister of my grandfather oh. on my uh, father's side. And there were some stories told, and of course one should not uh, you know, malicious gossip uh, should not be, uh, what do you call that? Uh, anyway, uh, that she had, uh, you know, not behaved herself properly. <laughs> but they were the ones who gave the affidavits to us. And when I first uh, stayed with them, they had just lost a, a child. Um, that um, I think it, it uh, was a, a terrible occasion for her, so she couldn't understand. I mean, she was really very difficult, because I was more difficult, because I was already playing my recorder at the time, and she didn't like it, and so <laughs> I would march around the living room at her house, you know, playing the recorder, and she would come after me, I don't know, I, it's, it's, you know, it's amazing when things happened so long ago, what the actual event really was and what really happened may not be the same thing, but it was bad, and then she had absolutely no use for my, for my Jewishness, that this was the year just before my bar mitzvah, that I even wanted to fast, yeah. and all this sort of stuff. And to make this story short. What happened, she asked me if I wanted to go to the World's Fair that was happening yeah, in New York. Yeah. yeah. Or visit relatives. Well, you know what I said. Relatives. And you know what she said. So we visited relatives. Yeah. And that was a real turning point in my life because the people we visited took one look at me and said, you know, you're never going back there. And I never did. Yeah. And um, they never adopted me, but she became, and they became really my uh, my parents. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
Herta was the name of the woman who just died not too long ago, shortly after she was a hundred years old. Wow. And I've been with her for, I know, 72 years, you know, and um, so, uh, wow. yeah. So, I took that, and what was your, what was one of your first jobs when you got here to the U.S.? Oh, my first jobs. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what my first job was. I was selling the Saturday Evening Post. Oh. Um, I was a nickel uh, for the Post, and you got to keep, um, I think, three cents. Mm -hmm. And they give you. A lot of boys, you know, I think it was boys who were doing that. Yeah. And they were standing, you know, at the entrance to the subway stations and mm -hmm. they came out. And, um, well, I took five copies. I bought one myself. <laughs> My um, new, newly found parents mm -hmm. and maybe somebody else. Um, so. Uh, that was the end of my uh, my. Talk. You talk about my first job. You mm -hmm. know, uh, that was probably my first job. My <laughs> yeah, that's funny, isn't it? My my second job. You didn't ask about that, but I'm going to okay. tell. Uh, I'm going to tell you anyway because it. Uh, well, I was delivering. Um, I think that was my second job. I was. Uh, um, Julius had a, was working, I think, also in, in a candy factory, mm -hmm. and you had to pour uh, chocolate into you know, little cups. Um, that might have been the second job. Yeah. But then, for a good many years, I was uh, delivering vegetables mm -hmm. in a vegetable store. They don't have those anymore, I don't think. And you have supermarkets, you know, with vegetable. But this was a vegetable store. And you got um, paper bags, and you had to take them to be delivered. Mm -hmm. And I wish I still had the, the book that I, because I kept a very detailed, maybe it's my Germanic uh, ancestry, you know, for uh, keeping detailed records. I kept a record of every delivery, wow. well, they gave me a tip, and what the tip was, and um, what their attitude was, you know, I had this whole book. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have it anymore. But uh, I had that job for, for quite a while, uh, you know, maybe a year or two, maybe yeah. more than that, or maybe less than that. Uh, but. Uh, that was, a, that was a big job. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And then, I know that on our survivor list, it has, it says you are a rabbi. So what's the story there? Can't hide anything, can I? <laughs> not, not that I particularly want to. Um, Yes, and I, I, still don't, I still don't like to be called rabbi because I yeah. kept telling my wife of blessed memory that um, I'm not a real rabbi, and uh, which means I wasn't ordained and you know all that yeah. stuff. And uh, she said you were a better rabbi oh. than you know most of those <laughs> who are ordained, and I, I was pretty darn good uh, because it was a, a small congregation that was kind of dying. And I kept it alive. Uh, they told me that there were, I don't know how many children were in the religious school, but before, before I ever started, I, uh, I was like 13 or 15 children that were in the yeah. religious school. Uh, because, um, well, my predecessor, who shall name be named unnamed, mm -hmm. it's a very famous name too, but, uh, 
he, he said that he would ra rather, what, what, what did he say, that he would, his wife would, or he, would he would rather that uh, somebody married a, a Kalia Schwarze, I don't know what he called it, you know, than a non-Jew. Terrible. Um, and of course, the first thing that I did, I reached out to find out where are, where are all the people there, and uh, we got a lot of you know. As I said, yeah. we had fifteen. What number I gave for the last time? <laughs> that was close. It's close. close. It's close. Huh? Thirteen, fifteen. Yeah. Um, so this was in New York. This is in. Butler, Pennsylvania. Butler. How did I get to Butler? Was I in New York? Were you in New York? No, the World's Fair. Where was the World's Fair? Well, the World's Fair was in New York. That's why I got that. So where did you come when you first came here? What city when you first got here? Where was your aunt or your... Yeah, they lived, they lived in New York at the time. Okay. 79. Oh, yeah, I went to P.S. Um... <laughs> One should never laugh at one's own jokes, but uh, <laughs> well, I think that's okay. I, I like think that. under the circumstances, it's okay. Uh, P.S. Uh, eighty-seven, which was at seventy-seventh and Amsterdam, I believe, okay. uh, Avenue. Yeah. Um, and. Um, at the graduation ceremony there, where they had people who had graduated from the same school, you know, mm -hmm. 50 years ago. And um, that was also when I first came to New York, which was November 3rd. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that, that's the day that I first met Herda and Julius. Um, and uh, they saw that I was, I had a rash, I was very undernourished, and they rushed me to a, um, a physician. Um, actually, the physician came to the house, they made house calls in those mm -hmm. days. and. Um, and uh, oh, he, that was a. Uh, I have forgotten a lot of this, but uh, I had a rash, and I had to be wrapped into some kind of tar or something, and uh, to, to to get rid of that. And I remember Herda telling me that story. Yeah. So I was in, in, in pretty bad shape, but it was that on that November third, was just before Roosevelt was running for his third term. And uh, we went, uh, we lived right near Broad, just a block from Broadway, so we walked down to Broadway and we actually saw uh, him on on that kind of a you know, parade that yeah. he was uh, coming through. So. <laughs> so then yes. is, how did you meet your spouse? The first one. The first one. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I was married uh, three times, I think, four times, I don't know, three. Probably three. <laughs> don't, don't cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it out. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, you know, or at least three. Got that. <laughs> I got that right, yeah. Uh -huh. No, my first spouse and the mother of my children was herself a Holocaust survivor who had spent um, a good many years yeah, in a Russian concentration camp. Yeah. She doing like factory work or labor? I guess so. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah. So what do they call her? Um, 
but um, <sighs> what was the question? Uh, I didn't have a question, but what was what was her name? Janine. Janine Carter with a C. No, that's what you would expect. Yeah, that is. I, I think. Is it a K? Well, they had a, a department store somewhere in Poland, and, and uh, that was spelled with a K there, so I don't know if they had changed it. Yeah. Hmm. So, how many, how many kids do you have? You said she was the mother of your children, so how many kids do you I have? I have three sons a stepson for my most recent wife, but uh, the three biological kids, and um, they, God bless them, they're, they're wonderful children. Um, my only disappointment is I have two grandchildren from each of them. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I had three children. Can't one of them give me three children? But, <laughs> but no, uh, the two is all that I'm getting. And, uh, and now I have, you know, these uh, six grandchildren. And the first four were boys, but the last two, my youngest son, David, gave me two wonderful daughters. So um, I'm blessed in many, many ways. Is somebody going to look at all these pictures? <laughs> me, me and Ryan. Yeah. Really? <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's fun for me. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> well, so keep shooting. <laughs> <laughs> what, are your, what are your son's names? Ronnie, Michael, and David. So two, two biblical names. Aren't those, aren't Michael and David, a, aren't they a, a, is that an apostle? Are well, they apostles? we're Jewish, we don't deal with apostles. I know, but I think that, I think no. those two names are, I think I remember that from my, my art degree. I don't, I don't remember. Maybe I don't. There's something in Christianity where the, it's like, the, this person or man is equivalent to some sort of animal, and I think those are the two names. I, I know Michael's at least one, but that's all I got. Oh, okay. That's all I know. Well, Michael is who is like God, you know, it's a very yeah. uh, Jewish name. Yeah. Rani uh, was born on February 8th, which was Shabbat Shirah, the, the uh, Sabbath of song. Mm -hmm. And so he was, Rani is also another, you know, name for... Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's how, that's how, yeah, they're all Jewish. Yeah, it's funny how names, like, because my name is, it's it's both Jewish and German, so. Hannah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And well, it's also in the Bible. Very biblical, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know where my mom came up with it, but anyway. So, a couple more questions. Oh. What's your What's one of your favorite things to do, like right now? What do you like to do during the day? Play at the piano. I, I love to play piano. I love to sing. Oh. So I'm guessing you know how to read music then. I do. Yeah, in fact, I um, gave one of the, uh, the world premiere of Stravinsky's Mass, which was uh, done in a church. Uh, it was a, really a very amazing experience because it, you, you feel yourself in being in like in the 17, 1800s, whatever, you know, it was, uh, and um, my, I know I have to tell you this, this is not confession, but uh, I, uh, the guy that was sitting next to me was a marvelous reader. 
And so I was able to follow him. Yeah. I knew if he made a mistake, I, I have that again in the temple choir right now, what the guy that was sitting next to me. It's always easier when that happens. I know how that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I guess I was good enough to, that goodness. And the Roger Wagner Chorale, Roger Wagner is kind of the Robert Shaw of the West Coast. Uh -huh. Wonderful conductor, huh? Cool. But I digress. Very cool. You're running out of questions? Oh, no. I never oh. run out of questions. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so my next question is, uh, would you say that your personal experience during the war held you back as a person or motivated you? Oh, that's a deep question. Mm -hmm. I would say it held me back because hmm, this is so comfortable. I used to fall asleep. I, I mean, that, that is another confession. Please don't. <laughs> When I interviewed people, I sometimes fell asleep while I was interviewing them. <laughs> Just, that didn't happen very often, but uh, yeah. It helped me back because I, I think I had a, a lot of less confidence, I think. I. Uh, Hmm? That makes sense. Yeah. Didn't have your parents putting, you know, having that. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, they have it right now, post-traumatic post stress syndrome. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they knew it back then. But no, they, I'm But uh, I don't know if they might have, but I, I don't know. But uh, it certainly had its effect on me, and uh, I... I didn't have a lot of self-confidence, mm -hmm. so that certainly held me back. Um, yeah. Good answer. A couple mm -hmm. more just filling questions. Walter, did you go? Did you go to college or school when you got here or anything? When I got here, I went to the. Seventh grade, eighth grade, then I went to. I think I went immediately to high school. I went to Forest Hills High School. Okay. I was one of the first classes that had gone all through the school because it was a brand new school at that time. So that was high school. Then I went to college at UCLA. Got my, I guess my bachelor of mm -hmm. music there. Okay. And then I went to social work school and got a master's degree in social work. Very cool. Did you ever practice as a social worker? Did you have a job doing that after you got your master's? Yeah. Yeah. Or I always had a, uh, most of the time I had a, uh, uh, a double job. I was a full-time social worker mm -hmm. and a part-time cantor. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Cool. I um, tell people that I uh, am now practicing what I used to preach, in other words, uh, uh, <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> I'm taking more pictures. <laughs> I'm having a memory lapse or whatever I'm having. Um,
Do you know the name of the company or agency that you worked for when you were a social worker? Well, I worked for the Cleveland Society for the Blind many years. I worked uh, for Montefiore Home, which was a home for the aged in, in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So what year exactly did you get to Pittsburgh? How'd you end up here? I know I ended up here because my son lived here. Okay. And, um, oh. is that the phone? You want to answer it and say Bollinger? Yes. It, yes, I will. Who does it say it is? Bollinger okay. Residence. Yeah, um, stop that. Is he the one that comes with you to Cafe Europa sometimes? Never. No? I don't think anybody has come to Cafe Europa with me. That might have been my wife at the time. Not one. I thought there was a... You have never one time. See, it's important they call back. Huh. Anyway. <laughs> so does just one of your sons lives here in Pittsburgh then? Yeah. Just one? Yeah, one lives in Washington State and the other lives in... Um, Arizona, yeah. Cool. Yeah, you, one of the things you learn is only answer the questions you're asked. That's you know, I'm talking. Well, that is all my questions. We did, we did answer all the questions. <laughs> oh, okay. Judge, Judge Judy tells you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good show. Good it's a show. very good show. <laughs> My wife was addicted to it. <laughs> if oh, she's yeah. anything, you know, she loved it. But you learn a lot. You do. Yeah, I can see that. You've run out of questions. I did. <laughs> I'm saving your, I'm saving our document. Save it here. <laughs>